thing we have here is we have supermodels. Yes. This is the outfit created by Matthew and Zaldi that appeared in the video and became the, the really the template for what I was doing. You know, I had been doing that black hooker look for many, many years, which you know very well. Yes. And then I decided to take it to Glamorama, and this was the first outfit that now, did it. You know, the idea of a drag queen breaking through was so revolutionary at the time. And, you know, I have to say the hardest part for me was to let go of the idea that it couldn't happen for me. You know, no one stood in my way more than my the conditioning I had as a kid. I swear, you know, I thought, well, I'll have to, I can't do it in drag. I, I'll have to do it out of drag. I remember, I remember you had the bodysuit with the head and you were thinking that that was the way to go for a while there. I was yeah. thinking I had to do this sort of androgynous thing. I couldn't do it in drag. Then it came to me, that was the, that was a major, major re revelation for me that the only thing holding me back was my idea that it couldn't happen in drag. It's interesting that you had to fight it as well. For Absolutely. Right. And that's important for everybody. And that's what, I, when kids write me, that's what I write back to them and say, you know, know thyself. Know and question those boundaries that you put on yourself and where they come from and why Why can't you do it? Well, now tell me, the first time you saw the video, the, the, the um, supermodel video, what was your reaction and did you realize that it would have the lasting impression that it did and that it was breaking so many boundaries and that it was giving so much to so many queens all over the world did you get that immediately you know what when you said that it never occurred and I don't think anyone has ever asked me that question and I immediately got a little choked up because I saw that video and I thought okay I'm a fucking star right. it's gonna happen right. it's gonna happen and I was I'm choked up now because I remember how incredible it was for me to see that and I, I knew that all of my dreams are gonna come true through this video and my mom actually got to see this video before she died. Well that's interesting you mentioned that because one of the next ones that we're going to is this one. Is this the one that you wore at the Million Man March? Okay. The, uh, and Gay and Lesbian March on Washington. And it was a million faggots there. It was fabulous. I, I there there was a tragedy that was happening at this time in your life. Yes, I was in, in Washington and of course as you said there were millions of people out there watching. It was on television on C SPAN and I got to perform and when I got back to the hotel, I found out my mother had passed away. And you know, while I was on stage, I, I knew that she was ill and that she, it could happen at any moment, but I, I, I'll never forget this plane taking off from National Airport into the horizon. I remember the sun was, you know, and there was this, a lot of dust in the air because once I got on stage, there were all these gay people running towards the stage. Like, I was red hot at that time. So there was all this dust and, and the sun had this orange cast over it and I saw this plane taking off into the distance and I swear to you, I got a sense that it was... That someone was leaving. Was something. Something. I got that sense. And in my mind, that's I still remember. But when I got back to the hotel, that's when I found out. It's always... It, Michael Alig used to have a saying, champagne glass in one hand, razor blade in the other. Like, it's always the best of times, it's always the worst of times. You're on the cover of Vogue, but you've been evicted. You know? <laughs> it's like that That shit happened. That's what fame is. You know? And I. that is one of your moments. Yeah. Actually, you know, it, it, what you know, yeah. I lost my mom in, on a physical sense, but she's always been with me, and I was actually happy for her to leave because she was in a lot of pain toward the end, and you know, I, you don't want anyone to suffer. I wish that she could have stuck around, and I, I love my mother so much. But you know, the thing about Cover Vogue and Evicted on um, the next, a lot of times the worst things that have ever happened to me turn out to be the best thing that ever happened to me, and it was my choice to look on the bright side. You know, they say the glass is half full or the glass is half empty. Both choices are correct, but you have the opportunity to look at the situation as uh, joyful or painful. But it, that's very, it's so nice that your mother got to see you know, all of the very beginning. She got to see the very beginning of it. And, you know, and she looked at me and said, you know, you are crazy. And, uh, uh, you know, I just knew, and she knew because she had predicted I would be famous when I was born. So, you know, it was great to have that 
connect and she got to see her premonition come to fruition. You know, I, I cried. I, I cried. I, I like sat down and just sobbed when Obama's grandmother died like the day before the election. It just, the, those things, it's just it, amazing. It, it, it just makes you think that there is something out there that that, that's, that, that gave him his extra, that was his, that was his champagne glass in one moment. It was. Uh -huh. It's amazing. So we, are, we really are all connected on one level. Yeah. Moving on right now, yeah. we have the green dress here from Letting It All Hang Out. Yeah, and that was a, it's a Versace dress that um, Elton John was very close to Gianni Versace, and Elton called and said, look, we're going to be doing the... Elton called one day and said, look, Johnny wants to give you a dress because I want to do a video with you. Is that, is that really, is that how quickly it happened? It happened just that, that fast because it, it all happened at once. And it's so funny because when all that was happening to me, you know, you don't really have time to think, uh, oh, I'm not good enough or I'm not. You, you just have to work. And, you, and I've been working for it for so long to do it. So he sent a bunch of people over fitted me and gave me like I don't know how many outfits that I still have today and uh, we did the Brit Awards in that and of course I also posed on the cover of my autobiography um, letting it all hang out in this which we can see which you can find on Amazon still right now okay so moving on right here we have we have the Chu Wong Fu right here and this was designed by it's Pamela Dennis and yes and she's done a lot of dresses for me in fact Joan Rivers uh, turned me on to uh, Pamela Dennis, and I actually did a lot. Watch out for names dropping. We got how many? Uh, <laughs> I only got to wear this once. I may have worn it on the show, but there's all this beautiful hand beading to it. Uh, just gorgeous. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what kind of queen are you? What kind of faggot are you? That you have all these things and you don't play dress up? You don't spin around your apartment in these gowns? You know what? I I, I didn't with that, but I did with that Bob Mackie. Okay, we're, we're moving on to the ball Mackie. Really quickly, really, I uh, just this is this was the logo. It's Christiane, a, a, a cat here in Los Angeles, who built this for the show, and he has a, a company uh, here in LA called uh, Rebellion Dogs. Okay. Yeah. We are moving on to the yeah. glory that is Mr. Mackey. Yes. Would you tell me about the experience? How was it? You get the call that he's going to do an outfit. How did it come about? No, I called him. Uh, when I started doing my Vegas show, I thought, well, if I'm going to do Vegas, it's got to be Bob Mackey. So we called him up and, well, the outfit that I wore was originally built for Linda Carter's TV special. And you and Linda Carter just happened. Well, but you know, actually, on me, off in the back, they had to open it up in the back. But all of this part, the width and st all of this, we had the same proportions like this. And Beyonce wore the exact same one, but they closed the back up. Did you ever read Quentin Crisp's Man *Manners from Heaven*? I never read that book. No. Okay. In it, he says that if you are going to scare the horses, you have to go out of your way to be that, as scary as you are, you have to be that kind. Okay. You know, you have to go over and be as gentle, and that's what Lee Bowery did. I, I think we've learned that from those people, that when, when people come out to meet you, you got you got you to gotta give it, you got to bring it. As years have gone on, I have been so grateful for my career and for the ability to still work that... I've become more gracious with people because I don't care if it's drag or show, but any type of show business, it is not guaranteed. And if any type of work, it, this this life, you could be gone in a minute. So why not be gracious and, and love? If, and if they came to see you, Absolutely. you know, and I'm there to give it to them, and I'm I'm more than happy to give it to them. And on that note, that was really gorgeous. Let's 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 leave on a on a kumbaya moment, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love baby. Well, yay, Jameson, Jameson, show out, rah! <laughs>